had this grand plan. It, the more I think about it, it was ridiculous, but I had this plan. Let's hear it. All right, so the plan was go to Antigua. I had a crew down there, and I had a boat captain. I had two boat captains down there. One was a legal boat captain, and the other one was a smuggling boat captain that was also indicted. So he was hiding out at my house in Antigua. Okay. Nobody knew about this house but me the, and the two boat captains. So I go to, I go to Antigua, and I got a 60-foot custom hatteras that I, I guess I got attached to. I, I had bought it, brought it new. I gutted it and uh, customized it with all kinds of fancy stuff inside the, the boat <laughs> from snakeskin mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> the dining area all snakeskin and just I customized yeah. this boat it was like ridiculous but <laughs> um, we'd never do it again so uh, my plan was I, when I was in Geneva I hired a French crew mm -hmm. at a brokerage company a boat chartering boat company to meet my vessel in Venezuela they were supposed to meet this vessel. So I go to Antigua, and I was going to tell my captains to take the boat to Venezuela to this certain marina and just leave the boat. That's all they know. They don't know who's meeting compartmentalization. Mm -hmm. You got it? Mm -hmm. So they, all they was told is they're going to go to a marina and drop the boat off. But I went out on my boat that when I arrived, they said, well, let's go fishing and diving. I like to get lobsters and conch and stuff. How long have you been at the, at the house at this point? I was only supposed to stay one day. I stayed for five days. On the, I only stayed at the house about two days, and then I went on the boat for five days. And so I was a week there. You were there a week? Yeah, I was, Where? On, I was only going to be one day. Why? And why was I there for a week? Why were you going to be there just one day? Where were you going after that? Back to Geneva. Okay. I wanted to get back to Europe. You were gonna. Your plan was to stay in Switzerland. No, I was going to probably go down to New Zealand. Eventually. Yeah, they got some racing down there. That I you were gonna. My, my, your new life was gonna be. That was your new life. I was thinking long, about going to racing in New Zealand with some kind yeah, of cars. You were gonna go race. <laughs> yeah. And live in New Zealand. <laughs> and assume yeah. a completely new life. Yep. Yep. That was the plan. So you went to Antigua. On this this house, is it on an island with other? Is there other houses on the island? This house was at the top of the rainforest on a mountain that uh, over. It used to be a sugarcane plantation, mm -hmm. and now it was a pineapple plantation. Okay, it was a cool house. It was um, the driveway was a little over a quarter mile up the, up this mountain, mm -hmm. and it was like all all old cannons overlooking the the bay. As you drive up, it was like all these cannons from wreck ships. Yeah. And as you drive up to this house, you come up into the big, there's a big greenhouse for all the botanical plants. Uh, the house was surrounded by botanical gardens. Mm -hmm. But in front of the house, I had a, uh, like a half of a, uh, a, a shipwreck uh, sailboat Dang. with a big 90-foot uh, uh, mask mm -hmm. with, with a crow's nest uh, up front where yeah. you could climb up on the front of yeah. my, on the top in front of the house. Oh, it was cool. It had a big wraparound Veranda. So staying the there, house. staying there was not safe. Like to, to staying there was kind of safe. I thought it was, but unbeknownst to me, months earlier, I had said I was in Switzerland for nine months. But I had taken out about three months earlier. <clears throat> I had met Pam, my wife, and the kids, in an island called Saint Martin. Mm -hmm. And I had that's her, where my mom. That's where, not my mom. That's where my dad and Teresa uh, went on yeah. their honeymoon. So. Yeah. So I had my I had Pam and my little boy, my newborn boy. He's like several months old, mm -hmm. and my daughter, who's seven years old. I wanted to see him. I was missing him. Right. Mm -hmm. I was dying. I wanted to see him. So I had them go a roundabout way to uh, different islands, and eventually get to Saint Martin. I arrived in Saint Martin three months prior, and it's got a Dutch side where the casinos are and a French side where the, all the nice beaches are and the good restaurants. I got my boat d docked at the French side of the island. And that night, one night, I said, I had pl been playing tennis with Pam, and my daughter was chasing him. We was having fun. You know? um, and I, one day I'm playing tennis, and I go up to the restaurant on top of this mountain where the, the tennis uh, court is where I'm at. It's like at a 
top of this little mountain with a restaurant overlooking the tennis court. I go up inside the restaurant to order something, and I tell Pam, I think that guy's watching me. I, I got a feeling he's looking at me. She's, oh, man, come on. He, no one knows you here, blah, blah. She don't believe me. You know? I said, oh, I think he's watching me. Well, I go back that night, and I go from the French side to the Dutch side. I want to go play casino, gamble. In the middle of the night, something comes up. I want about 4 o'clock in the morning, I want to leave the island. I'm paranoid. So I go. She's sleeping on the boat. I wake everybody. Hey, we're leaving. Uh, t- uh, get us off untied off the dock. We're going to St. Bart's, which is not far away. So we go over the motor over to St. Bart's. Well, when I come back, I give my instructions. Take the boat. I want you to uh, pull the boat out of the water here. Sandblast the bottom, paint the bottom, get all the barnacles off, and then take the boat to this marina in Venezuela. So my message was d- delivered. I go to Geneva for three more months. Well, they don't tell me when I call Antigua and tell them I'm coming, they don't tell me, hey, when we came back from St. Bart's, we got pulled up by uh, St. Martin police, and they questioned us. They didn't tell me. But now when I fly to Antigua, the people that I told you I thought was watching me at St. Martin, uh, one of my distributors, his lawyer had hired a private investigator to try to find my vessel. And that private investigator was the guy that was in that bar that day. He called the FBI and said, I've located Randy Lanier. He's in St. Martin. Damn. They had my crew hemmed up. I had already left the island until they missed me. By the time the FBI got there, they just missed me. But nobody told me. I go to Antigua and now... Two agents for the last year has been flying the island looking for me, and they found my boat the day that I was on it, and they arrested me coming into the harbor. When you're uh, on your boat, you see the plane flying over. That's the plane. You jump on a skiff, run into the, you know. F- oh, yeah. So I, that morning I'm getting lobsters and conch. I'm going to have a conch salad and yeah. some lobster salad yeah. for lunch. We pull up anchor. I had seen a plane land on a grassy runway. And my captain said, oh, they're just probably tourists. Well, it was two FBI agents. So I pull anchor that day, going to go have lunch at, 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 in, at, at Antigua. And as I pull into the, the harbor called Falmouth Harbor, there's like a big cliff on one side of the inlet. And it's a reef over here. And I pull into the bay. It's a big bay full of sailboats. And as I get in, I'm looking at the docks, and I don't see nobody. And I thought... Well, there's nobody on the docks. Must be okay, but there ain't nobody there. And as I pivot around, I see a 90-foot PT boat. It's gray. It's like a Navy boat. And I said, no, what do you think they're doing? They said, they might ask for our paperwork. So I said, no, I don't. I, my instinct told me, I don't feel good. To pivot this boat around, let's go out to the ocean. And as we pivot the boat around, the big PT boat came and blocked the inlet. Now I'm stuck in the bay. So I... Unleash my. I got a winch with a bow uh, on the bow of the boat with a dinghy. We put the dinghy in the water. I get out, get in the dinghy, and I go to a part of the bay. I go around a bunch of sailboats. I tie up. I get off, and I'm on a dirt road. And I'm gonna go back to my dinghy. But as I walk back down the dock, that PT boat had launched that dinghy, and there's four guys with rifles pointing them at me. So I said, "Oh." They're here for me for sure. Yeah. So now I take off running down the dirt road. Where are you gonna go? I'm trying to get as far away from these people as I can. <laughs> Are you like they're gonna hide somewhere uh, in the bush uh, or what? <laughs> no, I'm thinking if I can get over the top of this mountain, there's a deserted beach on the other side of this island. Maybe my thoughts are I can hide out until I can get back to where my I got some inf- uh, I got some cash and uh, passports at my house. Maybe I can sneak back to the house. This is my thinking. Yeah, but. As I'm running down the dirt road, I'm like, got no shoes. I've just got a pair of baggies on, no shirt. And here comes a dust storm. And it's coming. I'm going, oh, there's Jeeps. Yeah. It's the local people on the Antiguan police. And they end up chasing me up a hill. And they capture me there. Damn. Off to the joint I go. That was it. Yeah. Did So... When did you fly back from Switzerland? Like, did you, you off to the joint. I mean, you, you had to come back, right? Well, no. Or did you, 
you stay there? You got put in jail there? No, this is Antigua. This is Antigua. This is Antigua yeah. where they captured me at. All they right. Put, they put you right on the plane? No. They take me and put me on an island in the police department in the island for overnight. They lock me in like a closet. They, just a, yeah. they put me in a closet with no light. <laughs> I stayed there all night, and then the next day, uh, they tell me they're kicking me off as an undesirable. They don't want me on that island. I'm thinking, oh, oh man. What have I done? Great. Man, yeah. <laughs> this is good. Yeah, this is, I'm, yeah. I'm going to get another shot. And so they take me to the airport the next day, me and my boat captain. You ain't seen the FBI guys yet. Ain't seen the FBI yet. Oh, that's right. Right. That's right. Well, no, when they, when they captured me, they brought me to the, back to, the, to my boat. And I seen two agents standing there with aviator glasses, okay. and I knew they were FBI. Sure. So I knew something, the FBI is here. But then they told me to kick me off the island because I kept telling I got a local attorney there. I told him, please call this attorney. He's friends with the, the president of the, of the island. Well, they wouldn't let me call him. So when they tell me to kick me off the island, they're going to take me and fly me to St. Martin. So I, I'm waiting in a room. They got me handcuffed and shackled. And then they, I hear the flight, uh, Antigua to St. Martin. I'm going, man, I'm really going to St. Martin because they tell me, okay, this is your flight. So I walk out on the tarmac. I walk up the steps, handcuffed and shackled. And as soon as I get up to the top of the American airline, those two agents I saw at the boat flashed the FBI card. We're FBI agents. This is considered American soil. You're now under arrest. They put me into the seat of the plane. The captain gets on the radio and tells the passengers, ladies and gentlemen, this flight is being diverted. It's no longer going to St. Martin. We are flying from Antigua to Puerto Rico. And any passenger that does not disembark will get a free round-trip destination ticket to any place we fly. Nobody got off that plane. <laughs> Everybody stayed. And I said, oh, they was lying. You know, they, they, they fooled me. Yeah. And so off to Puerto Rico I go to, to the um, FBI headquarters there and arrest me and put me in a Puerto Rican prison for a couple of weeks. And that was a trip in Puerto Rico. That, that ends you being on the run for a total of how long? All of nine months. Nine yeah. months yeah. you were on the run. Yeah, from January to October. What are the emotions that you're, um, once you sit down in that seat, uh, what's the emotions that you go through? I'm certain there's <clears throat> probably several. And I mean, you talked about not being, not, enjoy, not enjoying being on the run. Yeah. So some relief, but at the same time, some fear of just yeah. what's this mean for me long, yeah. long term so a lot of times we make decisions on fear based without even knowing it you know and so i'm thinking i'm going to puerto rico i still got a chance to maybe get myself out of this situation i'm uh, optimistic oh okay. you haven't given up no i haven't given up uh -huh. i never gave up yeah so i get booked in this old puerto rico prison and they had just come off of a riot They'd killed a couple of guards, a couple of inmates, and they had just come out of lockdown. And it was all gang, the whole prison was gang run by Yenta. It's a Puerto Rico gang. And I don't speak Spanish. So while we get there, I see an amazing thing. When we pull into the Sally Port, I see him dragging this guy, and he looks dead. It's a guy in an orange jumpsuit, but he's, he's unconscious, bleeding. He's got hematomas all over his head. He's beat up. And he looks dead. And I see him dragging him by the armpits across in front of the bus that I'm on. And I tell my boat captain, man, the, the district attorney told me to waive extradition and come here because um, we, we'll just be here for a minute and then be extradited. But this is one of the most dangerous prisons in the world. So I told my boat captain, man, that lawyer won't bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we ain't even got out, got here, and we're seeing guys being uh, dragged, look like they're dead. Yeah. So they dress us out. They take us and put us on the across the yard, and we find a place to sleep. And it's two hundred and probably sixty people in this prison with bids for sixty. Yeah. It's no place wow. to no place to sleep. No no bunks. No cells. Right. I end up sleeping on the floor. Uh, 
in a in a place where I found a place and no one was sleeping there because it was in front of this guy, what they call the number two guy. No one wants to stay in front of his cell because he's a shot caller. <clears throat> and uh, the next morning, real early, uh, I felt a bunch of shadows over me. And I look up and there's like three or four big muscled guys and they got the day's newspaper and I'm on the front page. Ex-smuggler, race car driver, uh, captured, Puerto Rico. And they going, this you? And the guy said, yeah, that's me. They said, the number two guy wants to meet you. So that's the cell that I'm sleeping in front of. Yeah. And I go in there and he tells me who he is and he's doing 35 years, blah, blah, blah. And it gave me hope that, you know what, I might be able to get out of this prison. So uh, I was only there for two weeks, and they came What did the number me. two guy tell you? What do you want to see? The number two guy was, first thing he says, he asked me if I smoke weed. <laughs> I said, yes, I do. You know, he got out underneath his bunk or tray and twisted up a joint. It was was the it big good? unifier. <laughs> <laughs> in, wait, in terms of quality, was it good weed? Nah, not like what I had. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that conversation with Randy Lanier? Well, the entire podcast is amazing. You need to listen to it. The Dale Jr. Download available on all major podcast platforms.